So this is the new film by Pablo Lorraine, Chilean director, and it is a drama, a kaleidoscopic look at the events surrounding uh, the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy as seen through the eyes of the First Lady Jackie Kennedy, played by Natalie Portman. Uh, the film basically juggles a number of different time frames from uh, the motorcade in Dallas, uh, the events on the aeroplane, the aftermath uh, in the White House, the funeral itself, and everything. And it sort of shuffles these cards around willy-nilly. And the whole film is then uh, has a framing device which is inspired by um, uh, an interview with Jackie Kennedy done by Theodore White for Life magazine, in which uh, Natalie Portman's Jackie Kennedy is interviewed by an unnamed journalist, in this particular case played by Billy Crudup, who uh, turns up at the door and the very, very first thing she says is, please understand, I'm, you know, I'm going to be editing this conversation. This is going to be my version of events. You'll have to share something personal eventually. People won't stop asking until you do. And if I don't, they'll interpret my silence however they want. Her brow furrows, her lips are drawn. She holds back her tears, but she can't hide her anger. Most writers want to be famous. You want to be famous? No, I am fine as I am, thank you. You should prepare yourself. This article will bring you a great deal of attention. Oh, in that case, any advice for me? Yes. Don't marry the president. <laughs> hmm. Are you afraid I'm about to cry again? No, I, I say you're more likely to scream. Scream what? My husband was a great man. Now, the interesting thing about the film, as you heard there from that very brief clip, is that the performance that Natalie Portman does is very, very mannered, not just vocally, which you can hear there, but also in the way in which it's physically uh, performed. And I confess that it took me two runs to get the measure of Jackie. What she's doing is she is playing somebody who is performing. She is playing somebody who is performing for the media interview, who immediately after, in the aftermath of this unbelievably horrendous event um, is suddenly having to be on a public stage in which she is having to orchestrate not only the grief that the nation feels, but also to manufacture the way in which the press and the public will receive the legacy of her husband. And she's attempting to build the Camelot legacy, the legacy of, you know, never, never be forgot that for one brief moment there was a spot that was Camelot, which is then the story that then did become the legend of the Kennedy presidency. And what uh, Lorraine's film does is it looks at the construction of that idea and it looks at Jackie Kennedy as somebody who is, on the one hand, in the middle of this absolutely horrendous personal whirlwind, this, the most unbelievably horrible thing has happened. She is then having to deal with having to move out of the White House because the next administration is coming in and the next administration are much more abrasive, uh, abrasive and much more aggressive. She is having to deal with the press and not just the written press, but also television. And one of the things that the film does is it intersperses and restages and recreates a documentary from 1962, I think, uh, a tour of the White House by Mrs. John F. Kennedy. And so the, the film presents her as the first lady of the televisual age, somebody who is able to deal with all these sort of multimedia environments. But in the middle of all this is also dealing with the, the most horrendous personal tragedy. And the performance, therefore, when I first saw it, I, it felt it was so mannered, so stagey, so controlled that I actually, I have to say that I felt it alienating and I didn't quite connect with the film. The second time I saw it, because I, I really thought there was more to it than I'd got the first time around, it clicked for me. And two things happened. Firstly, it was, it's not alienating, it's alienated. And that then made sense. That then absolutely started to make sense that what Natalie Portman was doing was performing the isolation, performing the, the, the alien environment that she's in. There are many scenes in which she's walking through the White House set, brilliantly done White House set, which are almost like a character wandering through the Overlook Hotel in The Shining. And make no you know, mistake, in some ways, this is a ghost story. And there are elements of horror and elements of delirium and fantasia involved in it. So that was the first thing. The other thing is that Mika Levy's score, which is just brilliant, the second time round really worked its magic. Uh, you'll remember that she did such fantastic work on uh, Under the Skin and really, you know, drew that film's heart and soul out of the film and, and, it, and did, did so so brilliantly. 
And in the case of this, that swooning glissant, she, there's a, if you know the, the music that Johnny Greenwood did for There Will Be Blood, that strange... I'm sorry, I sound like somebody... No, that, that, was, that was... Thank you. That was good. But there are these, these strange swooning motifs, and there are comparisons to some extent between what Mika Levy is doing and what Johnny Greenwood was doing, but she is absolutely somebody of, you know, of her own. And what she does is she creates this soundscape that pulls all these fractured elements together that somehow manages to encapsulate, on the one hand, a sense of personal tragedy, on the other, on the other hand, a sense of brooding conspiracy and also a kind of a sunny optimism that has been shattered in the wake of Dealey Plaza and silences, really <clears throat> important silences between chords that... And it, I... More than anything, I thought it was a film in which, I mean, I think her work is, is and it's been nominated for awards and, and correctly so, because it is the thing that pulls together this kaleidoscopic picture. It's interesting that in the um, December 63 issue of Life magazine, they talk about the kaleidoscope of events after the Kennedy assassination almost immediately. Kaleidoscope is a word which is used really, really early on in the historical documents. And it's the word that keeps coming back to me when every and you know when the conspiracy theory was sort of at its height, people talking about kaleidoscopic versions of the truth, and there is a sense with the movie that the world has been shaken and the you know the 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 bits of the kaleidoscope are sort of floating around, and what you need therefore is something to glue that together. And for me, Mika Levy's score is the thing that does it. I think Natalie Portman's performance on second viewing is actually very fine. It, it is stagey and theatrical and with a purpose. Um, first time round, I found it alienating. And I know some people who found the film just, just hard to get into. I would say that it is worth, there's two things I've seen twice this week, this and Lion, which we'll talk about in a moment. And both of them rewarded second viewing. Okay, so let's assume that overwhelmingly people are going to go and see it once. Yes. Okay? I have already got my tickets. I'm going to go and see it uh, tomorrow. Okay. So, Oh, really? Okay, fine. So I want. I don't want to have to see it again. So what do I need to bear in mind to get it? Okay, well, the thing that I'd say is, firstly, the, the performance, which seems so odd at the beginning, seems so arch, there is a reason for it, that she is performing a performance. And in fact, in some scenes, she's performing a performance of a performance, okay? So the central thing about it is, it's not meant to be naturalistic. It's meant to be somebody suddenly caught in the glare of, of the world, putting a face forward. That's the first thing. The second thing is, if you start to feel emotionally disengaged, let the, movie, let, let the music do the heavy lifting, because it will do. 